We've got a 50 basis point cut to the triple R being foreshadowed. Also a promise to improve the quality of listed SOEs, but still a little bit light on detail here. Uh, China's very, very cheap, of course. How are you approaching this market at the moment? Yeah, good morning, Paul. Great to be with you. So uh, you're absolutely right. I think the market is going to continue to uh, wait and see for validation of these very interesting uh, uh, rumors around a potential market stabilization fund. Uh, valuation is uh, inexpensive. China valuations relative to its own history and by uh, comparison to global peers look very, very cheap. But uh, on the other hand, we have these ongoing structural headwinds uh, around the geopolitics, uh, around property uh, and around uh, local, uh, we can say, animal spirits, a real kind of collapse in uh, confidence amongst the investor entrepreneurial class. So we're all waiting, I think, for the spark uh, to kind of uh, take advantage of these cheaper uh, valuations. Uh, I think it's too early to declare categorically that this is the spark, but the market obviously up 7% in the last two days. Uh, we're all watching with great interest, I guess, to see if there's more here. Yeah, do you buy at these levels, or is uh, picking the bottom of the China market uh, just too dangerous a game at the moment? So we're neutral, so we're not underweight, we're not bearish, uh, we're not too constructive as we kind of balance those structural uh, forces, those uh, headwinds, which uh, candidly are not going away. So I think they're going to persist uh, and to continue to create headwinds uh, over the medium term. Uh, more tactically, I think there may be some selective opportunities, uh, maybe in companies with balance sheets which allow them to do self-help, maybe their own buybacks uh, rather than relying on a government stabilization fund uh, which may or may not materialize. So it's a very, uh, candidly, it's a very difficult situation. It's very uh, uncertain as to exactly what's going on. Uh, just last week in Davos, I thought Premier Li's speech was very interesting where uh, broadly he, he said that 2023 had gone uh, approximately fine for the China economy, grown more than the target. Uh, they hadn't needed to resort to a big kind of fiscal uh, splurge. So it's not obvious that the Chinese authorities are uh, uh, too concerned. So again, we're in this very difficult wait and see moment uh, to see if there is more to this uh, uh, story, more reality. And if there is, uh, of course, that can be encouraging. But I think the market is going to have to wait for action. Uh, we're very short on confidence at the moment. So just a story is not enough. Where you are overweight, though, is Japan, and it's been a very strong start for the Nikkei over the course of this year, but the rally is sort of lacking breadth as well. So does that concern you at all that perhaps a peak could be near? No, uh, we're constructive. So we've been bullish Japan for a, a few quarters now, uh, and that's gone pretty well. Uh, there's a lot of nuance in the Japan story, but I still think we shouldn't miss the point. The point is Japan has moved from deflation to inflation. That's both obvious and extremely important uh, in two regards, at least. Firstly, the earnings outlook. Obviously, if you have to cut your price every year for two decades, that's kind of difficult. Now, as Japanese corporates can uh, benefit from inflation, meaning putting their prices up, that totally transforms forms the earnings outlook in a very positive uh, direction. That's the first. Secondly, uh, Japanese savers have around $7 trillion of saving in uh, cash or something like cash earning zero. Zero is a great return in a time of deflation. In a time of inflation, it's much less good. So it's hard to know exactly how much of that $7 trillion is going to move, but I think it's just the math. Some portion of that $7 trillion is going to have to move into real assets, which for sure can include real estate uh, and other, but obviously equities is the, uh, uh, is the obvious one and I think we're going to see that kind of structural flow over the quarters and years ahead.